fun dinner party wars. Three couples compete. Where do I start? To outdo each other in the ultimate dinner party showdown. Two experts judge their dinner dues. Rise! Rise! And don'ts. Take your apron off. They share one goal, to be dinner party war champions. Yes! Our first warriors are Ginny, a youth worker, and Ivor, a high school counselor. Uh, we've been married for 32 years. And she still makes my life fun every day. Sometimes she'll just ask me too many questions. Do you want me to do it this way? Should I do it this way? And I'll just say, do it. Yeah, I thought she was going to say, I don't clean up. <laughs> oh, well, there's that, too. <laughs> I love the fact that, that Ginny's so creative. Um, she'll look at a recipe, but then she makes it her own. We're gonna win because... Everybody loves Jenny. And nobody beats Ivor. Second up, our old friend Mimi, a student, and Matt, a pharmacy manager. I think I have a strong connection to Korean culture, especially the food. Ancient family recipe we're dealing with here. Ancient Generations Korean. Generations upon generations. generations. Hidden in kimchi pots going across the ocean. I'm getting very stabby with the meat right now. I know in the kitchen, she doesn't mess around. Matt, I have something for you to do. If I'm like cooking something not not very well, she'll just be like, <laughs> like that. We're gonna win because. Losing is dishonor. And finally, the newly engaged Rob, a retail manager, and Glenn, a wine agent. We're both big music fans. That's where we met, actually, going to a show. Getting in the zone. Don't have a whole lot of time. I do like some precision in how we cook, and he's very haphazard in sometimes. I'm going to vacuum before they get here. Oh, yeah, that does drive me nuts. His attention to detail can be a little bothersome. I'm trying to save as much as I can, Glenn. And he's adventurous, so it's fun. Our perfect pairings are dynamite, and, and we're, we're gonna, gonna win this fight. These couples will meet for the first time when they host each other over the course of three competitive dinners. They each get $350 to spend and three hours to deliver. Only one couple can win, and that's up to our judges. Order up. This is Chef Corbin, our executive chef, who always brings his passion for food perfection to the table. He'll be judging the couples on menu selection, food presentation, and of course, taste. And this is Anthea Turner, the UK's perfect housewife, top-selling author, and our ultimate party hostess. She'll be judging the dinner parties on style, etiquette, and entertainment. They'll view each saucy detail using robot cameras. At stake, $1,000 of kitchen goodies and the grand honor to be named Dinner Party War Champions. It's day one, dinner party one, and Ginny and Ivor are dishing out some country comfort. Hello there. They'll start with mushroom tarts and sauteed shrimp in lemon and garlic, followed by a main of rack of lamb persiade or lamb crusted in parsley, garlic, and lemon, scalloped russet potatoes with gruyere and fennel, green beans, roasted peppers, and homemade rolls, followed by dessert, creme caramel. Great table. Oh, thank you so much. Now, because you've got this nice wooden table, what are you going to put down? Well, that is a good question. We do have some mats. They won't be appropriate to the to the theme. Want... The only thing is that I, I would hate you to get I know. heat marks on this table because you, you can't get them off. It's easy to get a scratch out than and it is a heat mark. This exactly. If there's nothing you can do about it and you haven't got any mats or you haven't got anything that's going to look appropriate, then then keep this keep because it. I'd much prefer I'd much prefer you kept I know, but I'd much prefer you kept this and save the table. She never does this. No, it's because but she's in Tottenham. Now I would like to show Corbin the lamb. Are you doing a sauce with that? Well, we have some mint sauce. I I'm not a mint person. I love mint sauce. Okay, yeah, good. I to her because she's I English. Store bought it. mint sauce. But if you look here, yes, that's what we call sinew. So it's chewy and it's tough. So you usually trim that all off. Oh, okay. the same way you would with spare ribs. You take exactly. that. Exactly. Um, so you just take a knife, go underneath, and peel it right off. 
Otherwise, you get lamb gotcha. that's chewy. Okay, we don't. A lot of people go, "You don't like lamb because it's chewy. You don't like yeah. the taste." It's probably because they left because the sinew. Because of that. Okay. And then these little bits right here, you just take your knife and you scrape all that part off, and okay. it's nice and clean. And that's what we call French lamb. If you don't do no. that, then you do those little fancy little. Oh, guess what? The butcher. He said, "Here, I'll give you some booties." They're so cute. Oh, come on. I think they're kind of retro. I think they're kind of cool. Yo, I put them on. Why not? As Corbin admires Ginny's booty, Ginny prepares Anthena's mint sauce. Mint sauce for, for Anthena. Anthea. 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 Anthena. Anthena. Yeah, Anthena. That's who you're going to be tonight. Mint sauce. You could, that has to go out for. That's for. Anthena. She carries on like this. She's going to. I'm going to dock her a point. For calling your name wrong? Yeah. Whatever. I think I your mean, name it sounds prettier when it says Anthena. It's not. Yummy. And what she put on it. This is her crust of parsley and garlic and lemon. This looks good. This is looking good. That's just bread, is it? That's just pieces of bread that have been cooked in a little muffin. Yeah, tin. yeah, yeah. Good idea, actually. Look at that. They have the warming drawer. The most precious thing that you can have in an oven. Ovens don't have warming drawers anymore. It's so difficult to get them with a proper warming drawer. Matt and Mimi are here. He's coming to somebody's house and he's on the television. Look at the way he's dressed. This younger generation, they just don't know how to dress no, up. No, huh? there's just no effort. And no gift either. Ivor. Ivor, I'm Mimi. They haven't brought a gift. Ginny's not the kind of lady that would even expect to have a gift. No, I know, but it's just really, it's a nice thing to do. Next to arrive, with a gift, are Glenn and Rob. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Oh, they brought a present. How kind. Look at that, Mimi. Look at that, Matt. That's yeah. a gift. I'm definitely in the doghouse today because I left our welcome gifts at work. <laughs> ah. That's what they all say. What if I have? Uh... Would you like to have some sure, more I'll, wine I there? Just... Sure. And even though Matt didn't bring a gift, it doesn't stop him from asking for more wine. He's been here for five minutes and he's got another glass. What do you guys do? Yeah. I sell wine. Well, I hope you I hope you're going to enjoy our game then. I'm a home winemaker. So I've put um, a Valpolicella that I made against a commercial Valpolicella. The objective is not to tell which, just to see which you like the best. Okay. Okay, so let's just have some fun with it. And the homemade wine games begin. Oh, look at that. That's a little DNA from my friend Anthena. Right, shall we? <laughs> We're sending back our... Why does that look like it's been in the Carbonated. dishwasher? Why is it all throffy? I'm sending it back because there's lipstick all around that glass. These ones? How did that happen? You know, we cleaned all those glasses. That's why they're all lathery. <laughs> That's why we've got bubbles on the wine. Now we know why our wine is foamy. That lipstick must be in grains. It's this still glass. on there. It's... You're going to have to... <laughs> Look it. If you get me a little cloth, I'm going to wipe it off. It's... We oh, still got lipstick. Not the best start. These are our scorecards on the wine. Is it hard? Is it soft? Is it dry? Mm. <laughs> are we talking about wine? This is a Valpolicella. OK, so wine number one. This is very nice, whichever one it is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. That's not very pleasant. I would immediately guess yeah. this is your wine. This is this is mine. Yeah. Oh wow. wow. Did how, how did you know? The smell instantly. So is it number two? Yeah. That's very nice. Ah! It's a good effort, but it's not home. It's not what I call wine. I'd say it's uh, spiked juice. The funny thing is, is I, I really do think there's some people out there that make great homemade wine. But I just think that you should let the experts do it. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's funny that, that um, when, I guess, I'm trying to remember whether it was 18th century, 18th century um, Barolos were really sweet wines. What did I read? It was the mayor of, of one of the villages in the Barolo area sent away sent away for uh, a French winemaker. Okay. Who taught the, the local wine producers about sterilizing their, their equipment and, and um, changing the way they made wines. So they ended up with a dry wine. And it became so popular with the local royalty and, and uh, you know, whatever, um, 
that Barolo's developed the reputation as the, what is it, the, the king of wines, the wine of kings, some of the things. Anyway, I don't want to be a lecturer, so. Don't let this get too preachy, too whiny, too, just, just make it simple and fun. This. Not fun. No. I was getting bored because I don't drink, but I could tell we wanted to kind of chat more, but we felt like we had to kind of keep playing the game. Okay, all right. Do it again, again, again. Okay. I forgot. Again, again, again. Okay. 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 Yo, Jeff, I understand. It was six, I believe, or five or six different wines. It's just like I felt very rushed to like drink, and I'm pretty sure Matt had to chug a wine. Yeah, Matt had to chug his wine. Look at this guy. Look at his glass. I would not, I would not turn down any of those wines. Exactly. Meanwhile, Corbin and Anthea are playing their own games. Did you know that if your hand is bigger than your face, you have a really high level of intelligence? No! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness for some food. Mushroom tarts in a brioche cup and sautéed shrimp in lemon and garlic. Quite rightly, you know, come on, if, if you, you take your apron off, you're, these are guests that are in your house, take your apron off. But you know, there's something so earthy about the house, about them, about the way that she cooks when she's chatting to people in the kitchen, and I'm not even going to ding her for that. Very tasty. Mm. Mm. They're good. Very, very good. So good. Whatever you put in there stays in there. Brioche. That's brioche bread sliced thin, enough so you can butter it. Look at the color right here. Perfect. That's nice. Oh. Mm. Beautiful. She knows how to cook. Mushroom tarts were probably my favorite. The shrimp's always amazing, and they're well made. They weren't overcooked or rubbery. And it's on to the dining room. For some. Oh, he's gonna go out for a smoke. No! I hate this! Oh. I really, really hate this. It's tacky, it's disgusting, and it's not needed. Seared well. Let's hope it's pink inside. Oh, my cue's in the wrong knife. Is it all right? There's a knife because know, she's hacking it because of the knife. Hacking it, God. Hacking it. Oh, get a knife. What's the point of having that beautiful crust on it if it's just going to hack it off and it's overcooked? Now, I'm going to say what my mother would say. What would she say? I'm very, very disappointed. The main can't be that bad. Rack of lamb persiad, scalloped russet potatoes with gruyere and fennel, green beans, roasted peppers, and homemade rolls. Chef Corbin, it's all yours. You know what this is? This meal reminds me of mum and dad's Sunday supper. Yeah. Right? And how much do we all love mum and dad's Sunday supper? Love my mum and dad. Mm -hmm. It's a good bean. Beautiful bread. You like it pinker than this, I know. A lot of garlic. I thought the lamb was slightly overcooked. <laughs> Uh, I think the main was okay. Uh, I did not um, like the lamb as much. I found it a little bit chewy. The whole main course was nice, um, but it was pretty forgettable. It kind of just says something when, like, the best part of a meal was the bread. Maybe the dessert will be better. Creme caramel. Creme caramel is just an egg custard with caramelized sugar on the bottom. A creme caramel should have no bubbles. Do you know how you fix that? Go on. You throw that one out, and you redo it. What is it that's? A little leggy. The sugar is bitter, too. The caramel, you know, well, as technique-driven as it is, it's slightly overcooked. And that brings the dinner party to a close. Cheers! Cheers! Cheers. Cheers. I, it was a good, cozy family night. A lot of food made from scratch. I loved her buns and I loved her tarts. The hostess gift. We both felt really horrible, especially when the other team did bring a gift and yeah. it was. We knew so... that was coming. What we had talked you about bought? it in the car. We what did talk about it. What happened bought? was we had a bottle of wine. Did you drink it on the way here? No. no. Good call though. I like that. Give me one word to describe their homemade wines. Well, it's punk. <laughs> 
homemade wine is plump to me. It is swill. It is not. Slug it on your chest. Hey, stick it you in a trifle. It. it is grapes that are fermented with booze. Day two, dinner party two, and Matt and Mimi are going Asian fusion. They'll start with traditional mandus, or dumplings, with fried pork served with soy sauce, and then fusion dumplings with Italian meatballs and cheese with a bruschetta topping, followed by an oxtail soup served with noodles, a main of braised beef short ribs with sticky rice, fused with a green pea puree and sweet potatoes. For dessert, a Korean hot cake covered with cinnamon sugar, vanilla ice cream, and fried apples. Ugh. Well, you see, welcome. we've got for the second time. I've got a nice wooden table. Where do these come in? The soup has noodles. So, so often, like in Korea, you know, you would have a spoon the, and chopsticks. So, where's so you the would, spoon for this? This is the spoon for that. So, it, it's sort of like. In Korea. Oh, so these are the noodles in the soup. In, in the soup. Yeah. Do you think anybody around the table is going to do that? No, apart from I don't think you. So. Have we got an extra fork hanging around yes, here we so definitely that you could do. do that if you really want to? Okay. Yeah. Why don't you just cut the noodles smaller? Done. Hello. Last time we had dirty glasses, yeah. and you have them dirty here too. On the bottom. You could do well if you just look yeah, the there. I can. Are dirty. The bulbs. I clean the, the bulbs. bulbs but you didn't clean this there, part. In that the know, bottom yeah. is all dirty. Okay. So I'll clean, those. clean that up. All right. Show me your braised meat. The yeah, trick with braising is that you don't want to over braise it because eventually hey. the meat will just fall apart. There you go. I can tell you right now it's tender. <laughs> Such a nice very nice flavor. Really for nice. Flavor is mmm. But if you keep cooking them, it's just gonna fall off the bone and okay, you're gonna so end up with. Should I just quickly heat it right before I serve it? Well, you yeah. gently warm it up. Yes. Okay. Yes. Gently. People don't want to burn them Can we out. keep it on heat? Oh. No. Why, why? No, you've got no. a few hours before dinner. Take yeah. it off the heat. Take it off the heat. Allow it to cool, yeah. and then gently reheat it. Okay. Okay, perfect. Right. While the hosts prepare their mandus. Perfect. Oh, they're perfect. Go, 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 go. The judges get into place. He's dressed up tonight. He has. He scrubs up well. That looks good. Don't burn them. Whatever you do, don't burn them. Don't overcrowd. He could possibly be overcrowding. And why is he doing that? Well, he's going to splash it all over that nice suit he's got on. Put an apron on. <sighs> why don't people wear aprons? You should always wear an apron in the kitchen. Don't put any more in. Don't, don't tell him. Don't put any more in. Don't, 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 don't. No, no, more, more, Stop. more. Stop it. Stop. First to arrive are Ginny and Ivor. All oh, the life and soul of the party has arrived, Ginny and Ivor. Which gets Matt a bit too excited. Oh! <laughs> well, that's a party. <laughs> that's awesome. So who okay? shook that up? Somebody Are there totally any shook that up. is a rag for you, Matt. Okay. Yeah. The most important thing, I think, is always to make sure that you've served your customers, your guests, and then go and clear up. Exactly. Next up are Rob and Glenn. Try not to slip. I just spilled some, uh, okay. some soda. Oh, okay, sure. He's very honest, Matt is. You know, most people wouldn't have just, wouldn't have said anything. Just don't mention it. If you spilled something, don't mention it. The likelihood is nobody will have seen it. He's the sort of the police pulled him over and said, are you drunk? And he'd go, yeah. Have you got any narcotics in the car? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in, in, my, in my trunk. Yeah. With the dead body. Oh, those look so beautiful. Oh, Maddie, they fried so well. Who knew you were such a good fryer of things? See, you're all in a panic for no reason. No, well, I was having a little panic, and I, and I think that telepathically, the panic got through. Perhaps the judges should always work telepathically, because telling the host straight up doesn't seem to work. Last time we had dirty glasses, yeah. and you have them dirty here, too. Why can't people glass. clean my glasses? Send it back. Look. Gosh, they... Oh! That's years of lipstick on that glass. Both of them go back for a wash. But first, the fusion mandus. Dumplings with fried pork with a soy sauce and dumplings with Italian meatballs and cheese with a bruschetta topping. These are the Asian-inspired Italian. OK, so we're going to have one of each. I don't know if that's, that doesn't work. It's a little messy, isn't it? This Asian one is really tasty. Mm. I don't know if they're as good as the mushroom darts, but they're very tasty. They're crispy, they're warm in the inside. I think that the Italian ones are a loss on this one. I do think the Asian ones are much better. The, the authentic Korean one, uh, I found, was uh, fairly flavorful. I didn't like the Asian, the, the inspired one with the Italian flair. You good? Yeah. Oh, can you? You need to do anything. 
maybe just check up on everyone, see if it's a little conversation is dry. Yeah, it no, is. no, it's good. Pick it up a I'm little. Pick it up. Pick it up. I will say, I'm pleasantly surprised on how attentive Mimi is making sure that Matt is. Make sure this is done. Make sure that this is done. Have you done this? She is in control of her kitchen. Wow, that's a lot of noodles, but this looks very nice. Oh. Next up, oxtail soup with egg noodles. This is the dish where there was a huge controversy. Do we use a spoon? Do we use a fork? Yeah. Do we use a knife? Do we use chopsticks? And then it was decided to have soup with a spoon. Yeah, but also to, to cut the noodles. She still cut them too long because my noodles don't yeah, stick they, to my they spoon. Are. Oh, I love it. Mm. Oxtail is cooked to perfection. So tender. Perfect amount of seasoning. The noodles aren't overcooked. The scallions are sliced nice and even, and the broth is good. Win. Is in Korea the country where you're allowed to slurp? It means when you slurp, it means that it's good. Oh, right, okay. It's like um, gratitude. Mm. It's not even funny. The soup was very tasty, but I did have some trouble with the size of the noodles. The noodles were just too long for me. Still two for two. And now I am very, very surprised at Matt because Matt loves his wine and I'm surprised he's not filling glasses up. Matt's oh, filling his own glass. filling his own glass. I'm anxious to try this main course because I've never had brown rice with pea puree. I very, know the very, 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 very tender. Delicious. This afternoon, it tasted so beautiful, and I wanted to eat more, and you wouldn't let me. You had it. Did you see the portion that you gave yourself? I'm the chef. And the little I'm the chef. It's my tiny job. Portion you know that you how long you talk about flipping napkins? Nobody cares about the napkins. Of course they do. They care about the food, and that's napkins me. That's my job. Napkins are an art form. Here's the main. Braised beef short ribs with sticky rice fused with a green pea puree and sweet potatoes. Korea, here we come. I know that's going to taste nice. Okay, before you know what's going to taste good, I think you should go to what you think is not going to taste good. And I think it's that rice. No, no swallow. That is, is not Oof. nice. It's like swallowing a big fork full of wet chalk. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Right. A little dry. I cannot believe that this came out of the pot like that. Where's the juice? Where is it? Where's the liquid? Now, it's still got beautiful, beautiful flavor. When it falls off the bone like that, it's mm -hmm. perfect. Mm -hmm. But it's a little dry. When I had the main, uh, I felt the actual rib was dry. It was uh, hard. No, I didn't really like the rice. I thought it was, uh, I found it drier than my rib. Maybe it's going to come down to the dessert. Mimi's cooked the whole night. I would prefer to have Mimi sit at the table and have Matt pre prepare the dessert. That's what should be happening at this point at the dinner party. But I think Mimi knows that if she, she needs to prepare it. Well, she picked a weak partner then. But Matt needs a little break. No, don't do this to me. You, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. If there's anyone that has deserved a cigarette break right now, it would be Mimi, not him. Where are you going? I'm going somewhere, all right? I'm going somewhere. Mimi's a, she's a gorgeous, wonderful person. You don't know what's coming, buddy. Watch, watch. Put it out. Get back in there. He's interviewing Where's your me. foot? Where's your foot? What? Put it out, put it out. Get back in there. Okay. I, th I thought I was. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Good job on that one. Oof. You smell like smokes. I do. Cigarettes. This looks good, though. I hate to say it, it took so long, it does but look it looks good. good. Here's the dessert a Korean hotcake covered with cinnamon sugar, vanilla ice cream, and fried apples. <laughs> It has a funny taste in the middle. I mean, the apples probably could be cooked a little bit more. The cake is a little doughy, but the cinnamon no. flavor on it isn't bad. But I'm fighting with it to cut it. <laughs> and how would we say thank you in Korean? 감사합니다. 감사합니다. And the party ends with a bang. So I'm just gonna start, I'm just gonna play a little bit.
Give me something to whack. What do you need to do is say, right, who wants to have a go at the drums? We don't have to oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Come on, Ginny. Come and go have Jeannie. a go. Go, Ginny. Yes. <laughs> Can you tell I've never done this before? No. <laughs> no, I can't. No. I'm glad we got the drums out. Otherwise, without it, it would have been a little dull. Mimi has spent too much time in the kitchen. Most definitely. Um, you can't say that she's a bad cook, because she's a good cook, and she's made some beautiful things, but to the expense of the party. What about the brown rice with the pea puree? I didn't much like that rice, myself. I didn't think it complimented the, the, the meat. Where did they fumble? They fumbled when Mimi chose Matt. You think Matt was the fumble? That would be my big fumble. <laughs> he's lovable, but he's not helpful. It's day three, dinner party three, and Rob and Glenn are planning some perfect pairs. Hello. They'll start with bacon-wrapped dates stuffed with goat cheese, followed by a soup course of double soup, celery and tomato soup served in the same bowl, separated by smoked foam, followed by a main of bison tenderloin, root vegetables au gratin, and fried mushrooms. And for dessert, bourbon pumpkin cheesecake. OK, what are you doing with bison? Uh, I'm just searing it, and gonna, it's going to come out fairly rare. But what, what cut is it? It's a tenderloin. Bison tenderloin? Yeah. Wow, we must have paid a pretty fortune for that one. Yeah, I did. <laughs> How much? And it looks beautiful, too. How much money did I'm you spend on that? Soup. The bison was 95 bucks. A hundred bucks? Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't cheap. Which means you only have 250 left, which is why we're doing soup and cheap root vegetables. That's right. <laughs> you got it. The main. So you're going to pan sear those. I'm going to pan sear these. Finish them in the oven. Finish them in the oven. I considered it searing it on the barbecue, but. You could probably get away with using this. And then you're going to have the marks. OK. Try well, it. Can you do that up front? Yeah, and you'll pan sear it ahead of time. You just let it sit there at room temperature, and when you're ready to pop it in the oven, slide it into there. So, and oh, so pan sear it and then put it in the oven. Yeah, OK. Napkin so, folding. Yeah, so I, I did uh, a bit of a robe shirt and then a bit of a flowery, you know, dress on the side. So just kind of having some fun with the pairing so I did too. girl folding and boy folding. Exactly. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> when you walk into the house, I don't want to see all the coats. If you've got guests coming in, that's a rack for guest coats. And any scarves or anything they brought with me, get rid of all of that. And I don't want to see stinky old boy shoes when okay. you walk through the door. OK. Lovely. Great. As the hosts prep their bison, the judges get into place. Ah, you listen to me with the bison. Look at that. That looks good. How long does that go in the oven for? 10, 12 minutes. And the best way to do it is with the old squeeze test. It feels soft, rare. It feels hard, well done. I don't like shoe racks like that. They're not an ornament. Where do you put them? Well, you can have a nice basket which you put the shoes for the day. The only reason to have shoes downstairs are because maybe you'd have a pair of trainers and the shoes that you're coming in and out with. That's it. You don't need all of that, but this is a lot better than it was this morning when we walked in. First to arrive are Ginny and Ivor. Woo! That's a party. It shouldn't actually make a noise when you open a bottle of champagne. Technically speaking, it should, if you open it properly, it doesn't make a noise. Silent popper. Noisy poppers and bubbles are for Formula One drivers. Matt and Mimi are here. Matt's dressed up again. You see, now he's got a clear coat rack. He can't wait to take people's coats. What would he have like, done before? He's like the coat monitor at school. This is our uh, present for you. I remember that Rob said he really, or yeah, said that he really liked the dessert. Amazing. So this is kind of a like pre-made kit, so he can make it. And I translated the directions on the back in oh, English. Oh, sweet, because we can't so read it. So you don't have to struggle with that. <laughs> Rob has done really well with the gift. The welcome is very important. Sets the tone for the evening. 
And finally, a lesson in glass cleaning. You hold the glass over some steam and then you clean away. Yep. And if you've got glasses that you put in the dishwasher, then again, however good your dishwasher is, you always get those drip marks. So this is a really good way of getting rid of the drip marks. Today's menu is the idea of perfect pairings. <laughs> the first course is the uh, bacon wrap dates oh, with nice. stuffed goat cheese inside. Nice. So the Lovely. idea of salt and sweet, yeah. hopefully you guys will like you, it. What kind so, of cheese did you say? Uh, goat cheese inside. Oh. Good pairing. I'm a huge fan of dates. Mm. These are good. There's a part in my mouth, but the best appetizer all week were the mushroom tarts. Those were lovely, weren't they? Those bacon wrapped dates were very interesting. I liked them, although it was a little burned on the bottom. Oh, everyone's had cheese stuffed dates with bacon on it. It was whatever. Taste wise, I'm not, there's not a whole lot that I can complain about. So at one point, I was just like kind of bored. Uh oh. So I was like, hey, let's put some and lemon on these. Why not? I was wondering, I was thinking the uh, the bacon wrap date would taste great with some lemon. With lemon? Yeah, just like a little hint of lemon. So I thought I'd take this knife and just sort of chop, chop, chop. chop. Not appropriate. You don't do it. I don't know why he's doing Doctor. this. I, I thought it, I thought it was rude. I think that Matt likes to draw attention to himself. You've taken time and effort to prepare an hors d'oeuvre. Your guests have served it, and now you have one of the guests who wants to alter it by slicing lemon and put it on it. What do you do? You just leave him to it because there's nothing you can do. Matt has drunk that so quickly. Two down. I think if you notice that somebody drinks really quickly then as the host, you've got to sort of start to try hold and just hold back and don't offer them another one straight away because the chances are they're going to say yes. I'm a, do I'm a complete dog person. Cats, no, no, no. Don't do that. It's my All right. Bad manners. Bad. That's Mimi's kind of like the mother of the relationship. Do you notice that? Don't do that. Don't do that. Just stops him from doing things. He likes to have his glass filled. Mimi said no. She's acting like the teacher. Perhaps these games will distract him and give Mimi a break. I have a couple of games for us. The first challenge, it's a race. The first team to put this in their mouth, okay? And then put five dice up at the top. Oh, here we go. Doing good, Ginny. Oh! Yeah. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Four Mississippi. Five Mississippi! I'm going to tell you something to sculpt. Your yes. partner has to guess it. One, two, three, go! <laughs> Pump. Pizza! Pump. Swiss cheese. Thank wow. you. This uh, no, is I a didn't. corkscrew? Yeah, because I didn't get around. I hadn't finished it. Make sure you don't mix up your, your puzzle pieces. Straight, straight some words. That's good in that. We're missing a piece. We're missing a piece. There you go. We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. Yeah. There it is. Boom. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Yeah, we won. The guys won. Oh, I don't think so. Actually, I like this. Nobody's ever done it on Dinner Party Wars, and I really, really like it. Oh, no. What is that? Do you know what the best utensil is for this? Tell me. Teapots. Here's the double soup, celery and tomato soup, served in the same bowl, separated by smoked foam. A little bit of a bite in that. This is the best soup of the week. This is absolutely beautiful. Presentation, yeah. flavor. Not everyone thinks so. I was like, meh. It was OK. You know, I could have used a bit more salt. It wasn't. Anything special. You know what this is? This is a reaction to, oh my gosh, I think we might lose. A lot of fat on there. Look at all that grease. It's like a little bath. So how would you get rid of Cholesterol that grease? right there. How are you gonna get you rid of the Skim grease? it off. Put it in a narrow vessel. Yeah. Fat always rises to the top. Or make it the day before. Put it in the refrigerator. Yeah, of course. And let it solidify. It's the easiest way to do and it. And you peel it off. But you peel it off and you save, save it. it. Oh! Makes me great. Put it on your roast potatoes. You can do all sorts of things with it. Look, speaking of having to. Oh, stop it! You don't need it. You don't need it. Do it again. You don't need it. Two nights ago, 
I had, I woke up and I had a nightmare. There's this woman screaming at me. Put it out. Why? I can't have put a cigarette? Out, put it out, put it out, put it out. It's affecting your taste buds. You're gonna go back in there smelling. Or go inside. Now. I think she likes me. <laughs> she what? what did he say? I think she likes me. Oh, we got bison action happening. Look at these little love muffins. Simple trick when you plate a meal. Okay, I don't care what it is. Plate the bigger things first and the smallest things last. Why? Because the smallest things cool off the quickest. So you put them on the plate last. Piping hot. What did these guys do? They put the smallest thing first and then they finish the plate off the biggest things. Here's the main. Bison tenderloin, root vegetables au gratin, and fried mushrooms. Oh, look at that. That, that is that is, is very perfect. Good. That is very good. I would have given it a little bit more of a kick with a little bit more seasoning, but gorgeous. That bison is cooked to perfection. Mm. It's tender. Mm. Oh. One criticism. Mm -hmm. It's a pinch of salt. Mm. Oh. It is good, isn't it? That is one yeah. fine root veggie. It is. Gratin. This is a good plate. Delicious. It was a bit chewy. Um, the main was a little um, presumptuous in the sense that I like my meat cooked a little bit more thoroughly. Ooh, is that the cheesecake? <gasps> what do you love about these plates? I love the fact that they're white, for uh -huh. one, which means you have that reflective surface which showcases the food. But it's just, it's, I like the different shapes. They've got rectangular, they've got round, they've got square, they've got, it's just, it's, it's fun. And it's a great palette for food. And I think too many people forget about the simplest of things. And it starts with the plate. Ah, now, how many people don't do this? This is one of the most perfect, easy tricks in the book. Let's see if he does it right. Though. Well, okay then. Okay. At, the just, moment, at, the moment, at the moment, I'm getting excited and I'm feeling good. Rise! Rise! Oh, that's mine! Rise. It's mine! It's mine! Nice and smooth lines. You know, I'm actually salivating. And finally, here's the dessert. Bourbon pumpkin cheesecake. It's like pumpkin pie, but it's a cheesecake. It's smooth, it's creamy, it's flavorful. Surprisingly light. It's like eating a pumpkin cloud. Ah, the dessert, where do I start? It was not good. What? It was not good. And I want to say it looked better than it tasted, but it pretty much tasted what it looked like. Praise when praise is due. And that brings the dinner party to an end. Between all of them. There's a great dinner party. And now for the judging. Hello there. Hello. Only one couple can win dinner party wars. Only one couple can take away over a thousand dollars of cookware. But more importantly, Hold this trophy high and say, I am the Dinner Party War Champions. Our first couple, Ginny and Iber, please step forward. Before we talk about your dinner, let's see what your guests thought of your evening. It's a good effort, but it's not home. It's not what I call wine. We felt like we had to kind of keep playing the game. It kind of just says something when, like, the best part of a meal was the bread. Well, let's talk about your food. Okay, go ahead. Your appetizers, those mushroom tarts. Phenomenal recipe, phenomenal flavor. We asked for seconds, love them. Your main course, the lamb. I think you slightly overcooked it, and it may be a little bit of chewiness happening there, but overall, well executed. Dessert, creme caramel. I think it was slightly overcooked because you had a lot of bubbles, and when it overcooks, you get that little bit of a eggy flavor. And I thought, considering it was technique driven, it was a good risk to take. Thank you. Ginny and Ifa, you are two of the world's friendly people. 
the wine tasting. And, and it is always a worry of ours mm -hmm. when anybody says, oh, we're doing wine tasting, because we go, please don't make it be pretty. Just don't talk about wine all evening. But you did. It sort of overtook everything. Matt and Mimi, please step forward. When I had the main, uh, I felt the actual rib was dry. It was uh, hard. No, I didn't really like the rice. The noodles were just too long for me. Your man do dumplings. I would have just stuck with the cream ones because they were delicious. Your main course, your beef short ribs. Flavor was excellent. The aroma was intoxicating. I thought that whatever you marinated them in was perfect. But then you left all the juice in the pot. The brown rice with the pea puree, it was horrible. <laughs> your dessert, though, the cake itself was a little chewy, but the winner was definitely the apples on the cakes. Good job. There was nothing awful at all. And I think, actually, you have to be proud of yourselves for the way you pulled it off by the skin of your teeth. And Mimi has the patience of a saint. And I'm so glad you got the drums out. It was fun. You bring your talents to the table. Glenn and Rob, please step forward. Those bacon wrap dates were very interesting, although it was a little burned on the bottom. It wasn't anything special. I was like, meh. Your appetizer was the date wrapped in bacon stuffed with goat cheese. Pretty basic, pretty simple, very flavorful. They were good, but they've been done. Bison cooked it to perfection. It was tender, it was medium rare. We thought it was very good. Cheesecake for dessert. You love the dessert. In fact, she wanted to eat everybody's dessert. Um, but it was good. Now, I thought your games were great. great. We thoroughly enjoyed them in here. So it was presented, it was executed, and it finished off beautifully. So very, very good. Well, now you've heard everything we have to say about your dinner parties. Now we're going to give you your scores. Ginny and Ivor, your score on food. Seven out of 10. I'm going to give you six out of 10. Which gives you a combined score of 13 out of 20. Matt and Mimi, your score on food. Seven out of 10. I am going to give you six out of 10. Which gives you a combined score of 13 out of 20. Our first two couples are tied. Rob and Glenn, your score on food. Eight out of 10. Rob and Glenn need a six for party to win. But I'm actually going to give you seven out of 10. Which gives you a combined score of 15 out of 20. Which means the winner of Dinner Party Wars is Robin Glenn. Congratulations. Well done. Congratulations. I think we're, we are all winners. Yep, we did this um, to have fun, and we certainly had fun. We had a lot of fun. I mean, we didn't lose, so I guess that's good. But technically, we did. We tied for last. If you so lose, it, that's lost. We lost. We won because we're TNT. We're, we're dynamite. dynamite! And that's we won, won this fight. fight. Yeah, baby.